well for anybody with an interest in steam railways such as I have this has got to be heaven. A full day retracing our steps from Morlyamien Motomar back to Bago although the last little bit of the journey was by coach and then the prospect on the following day of two days of journeying north from Bago to that famous town of Mandalay. The service train that was scheduled at the end of our last film has now departed Motomar Station six hours late. I think this is called cutting it fine. Very fine indeed. See you again. <laughs> Finally, we are underway ourselves. We're just leaving the station.
pillars for the new road and rail access. That's the rail which is incomplete. like that. the engine shed. The structure on the right there is part of a new bridge construction for a raised railway. The lead into the bridge is obviously a very lengthy one. Back to Bay Road. So uh, I shan't 
take out the fill with the return journey. This place should be bored even if nobody else is looking at it. It's a slightly different time of day, so that gives some variety, but beyond that, it's the same scenery. by the occupants of that house. I can see several more in the distance. We are now back at the location which I have nicknamed Muddy River, as we shall see. We are now at Thaton, where we shall take on water. Thaton is on the right of the map there, south east of Bago. Here we see one of the train crew who's looking after us on this journey 
and then an indication that the water crane was made in Yorkshire in 1904. And of course the BR symbol is Burma Railways, not British Railways. Made by the Westinghouse Brake and Signal Company in Chippenham. Colonial trade. And this is a turntable for the rail car that operates on the line. London and Chippingham, although the name Saxby was also included in that company's name at that point. And the water tower is dated 1904, Burma Railways. And now, just a little further along the line, the opportunity for another photographic run past. Unfortunately, as I said, the locomotive is running bunker first. Another station stop at Don One and some quite significant locomotive and train movements which all adds to the, the fun I guess. So that it can run round the train and uh, give us a view of the moving in the proper direction. The engine's now coming back down the line.
No sign of any great movement. Ah, oh, here it comes.
Gotta walk in front.
the engine will now disconnect and run around the train a second time. An amazing piece of agility now as one of the villagers uses this rudimentary ladder structure to climb, what, 50 feet up this palm tree as part of a palm oil extraction process. Absolutely amazing feat. And finally, to a town with an unpronounceable name, at least I won't attempt it, where we rejoined our bus to travel back to Bago. After a comfortable night in a splendid hotel, we are now ready for our early morning departure from Bago at the start of our journey north to Mandalay. And this is our comfortable accommodation on the train twin beds and the gentleman behind the partition there ready to cook our breakfast. Wonderful. Station. Thank <laughs> you. 
Interested spectators on the other platform. We still haven't left Bago Shed. Or rather, we still haven't left Bago. And this loco is parked just outside the shed on a freight. We haven't seen much evidence of freight, but clearly there is some freight. Loco 972. And the water column is, this one is dated 1903 and it's made by a firm at Brig House in Yorkshire, the same as the previous one. Or now we can see the uh, full details on the maker's plate. But that's 102 years old and still squirting water one assumes. Very nice little signal cabin and the semaphore signals adjacent to it. So here we are at Peyagi for our first stop of the morning, just north of Bago, which you can see at the bottom of the map, and Peyagi just north of that.
These two young ladies were collecting mud from the bed of the river that ran through the village, presumably for use on their houses. And this grandma, I imagine, and her little nun, were watching proceedings. And how's that for camouflage? Our stopover at Payantaza, where our engine took on water in the shed, was a much, much longer affair than we anticipated. Two and a half hours, I think. But it did give us the opportunity to have a good look at the people and also spend a fair amount of time in the engine shed where there was one particularly interesting loco, which was unique, uh, a loco built for the American services during the war by the American Locomotive Co. Here it is, in fact. Mr. Ballantyne, who was leading our tour, referred to it as a Mikado. Back at the station now to look at the eggy bread lunch and a little group of folk sitting on the station intrigued by what we were doing. But as always the youngsters were very keen to have their pictures taken, some rather apprehensively I think. And this little lad was uh, earning his corn, selling something or other, ringing a bell and encouraging custom. We hope, at least. And back to one of my favourite subjects, the Water Tower. This one of 1907 vintage. BR, of course, is Burma Railway, not British Rail. Finally, our locomotive and its support wagon emerged from the shed, negotiated the point system and was attached to the front of our train, much to the delight of Hugh Valentine.
You brought it back. Thank yeah. you. Oh, my <laughs> pleasure. <laughs> The inquest as to why it took two and a half hours to uh, rewater the locomotive. Size of the inlet pipe, I guess. Trying to get water into the tank. Yes, the feed pipe broke broken completely in half. Anyway, we ought to go. Somebody on the engine. Someone for the very nice engine you ought to be using it. And now a, a couple more run past sequences, the sort of thing that you're well familiar with now if you've watched this sequence of films from our wonderful trip.
Well, here we are at Pew, P Y U, which you can uh, see on the top of the map there, and another run past sequence with some interesting agricultural goings on in the foreground, but nothing could prepare us for the sort of scene that we were greeted by in the station when we finally got into the station. There's a famous drawing of a thing called the Battle of the Gauges at Gloucester Station when they changed from the narrow gauge or standard gauge and broad gauge in Brunel's time when everything was happening and it was certainly happening in Pew Station. The station at Pew provided yet another opportunity for a run past of our train, but also a look at the splendid people who just come to watch the train, watch us, and add to our understanding of this splendid country which seems to operate at, at a gentle pace, which suits us being on holiday particularly. Young and old wear this white face makeup, which is not makeup at all, in fact, it's protection against the sun. And whereas earlier in the series we saw the little novice monks carrying a sunshade, these people are using this white sun protection. Very wise, too, I reckon. And in a moment or two, my film brings this amazing scene to life. Yeah. 